Welcome to another math lesson. I'm Mr. Polarski. I'm your host today. We're going to be talking about the arc length theorem. Now, when it comes to talking about the arc length theorem, there's a thing you should know. It's all about circles. And we have different parts of a circle. Here I've drawn, drawn a circle with a center. Normally circles are named by a capital letter. And circles have special parts. One of the special parts they have is the radius, which is defined as the distance from the center of a circle to the edge of the circle. They also have a diameter, which is defined as a distance that goes from one side of the circle through the center to the other side of the circle. A real quick review. A good thing to know is that a diameter is made up of two radius, two radii, I should say. So remember, we're studying arc length theorem today, and it is everything to do about circles. Here we have the arc length theorem. You might want to read it to yourself as I read it aloud. The length of an arc of a circle is a product of a ratio, measure of the arc, over 360 degrees, and the circumference of the circle. This sentence gives us an equation that we can write based on information, either given in a diagram or written out in words. I did forget to put my multiplication sign in here. Now, first part of this is the length of an arc of a circle is. Well, we all should know that is is our equal sign. So here's our equal sign. What I have written here is the length of arc xy. That's going to be the distance from x over to y along the outside of the circle. To find that length or that distance, measuring units that we're used to working with, feet, inches, miles, meters, centimeters, okay, that's what we're looking for. If we can figure out the measure of the arc, if we know or we can figure out the measure of the arc in degrees, we can convert that to a length by taking the measure of the arc in degrees divided by... 360. Now 360 is the whole. The numerator here is the part that we're trying to find. The denominator is the whole. If we multiply that by the whole, the whole distance around the circle, the entire arc length if you will, we will find the length of the part we're looking for. So this equation here, really we're trying to find a part of the distance around the outside of a circle. If we could imagine that the measure of arc xy is 45 degrees and it has a radius of let's say 6 meters, we can figure out the distance it would take us to walk from x to y. That would be the length of arc xy. So what we do is we use this right side of this equation and we substitute in the measure of arc xy, which I gave as 45 degrees. I just made that number up. And I divide that by how many degrees are in a circle, 360. That's not a 66, that's a zero right there. 360 degrees times 2 times pi times 6 meters. All I did was substitute in 45 for the measure of arc xy. Substituted that in for that there. And in the formula up here, I substituted in for r 6 meters because that's the radius of the circle. You can either follow through with this calculation using a calculator or you could use some basic math skills. 
using basic, basic math skills, you're probably taught to cross cancel. That may be familiar. To help my students, I usually take this side and put it over one so they can visualize the numerators and the denominators. And we wanted to find out what's common. If we start with 45 degrees over 360 degrees, 45 is actually a factor of 360 degrees. 45 divides into 45 one time, and 45 divides into 360 eight times. So we have 1 over 8 in this fraction, so over here we can cross cancel 2 and 8. A 2 divides into 2 one time. 8 divides by 2 four times. But we're not done yet. 6 and 4 have a common factor. 6 divides by 2 three times. And 4 divides by 2 two times. So when we multiply all this out, what's left over after we cross cancel In the numerator, we have 1 times 1 times pi times 3. Well, 1 times 1 times 3 is 3 in the numerator. In the denominator, well, actually, we have pi there, too. So it would be 3 pi. What about you, pi? And then the denominator, we have 2 times 1 left, so that would be 2. So we could, in terms of pi, say that the measure of arc xy is equal to 3 pi over 2. You may also see this answer expressed as 3 halves pi. 3 halves, not 3 thirds, but 3 halves pi. Taking a look at an additional example, and I forgot to put some information in here. 30 degrees in there. It says find the length of arc WXY. Unlike our last example, we're not finding the length of the minor arc, we're finding the length of the major arc. We want to find the length of WXY, and actually that should not be WXY. That should be XWY. We're trying to find the length of XWI. Sorry about that. I want to go from X through W and at Y. We want to find the length of the major arc here. So to find the length of arc XWI, we'll write that down. And I'm making all kinds of errors in the second half of this. Let me just fix that. Spelled length wrong. The length of XWI is equal to the measure of arc XWI over 360 degrees times 2 pi r. Remember, the 2 pi r is the circumference of the whole circle. And over here, we have the ratio of the part to the whole. And that's how we figure out the part of the circle we're trying to find, the length of the circle we're trying to find. Remember, this is the arc length theorem. So the measure of arc xwy, it's not given. What we're given is the measure of the minor arc xy. To find the measure of this arc from x to y, or the measure of that angle, if you will, we have to take 360 and subtract away 30. The entire circle minus the part, and that's going to be equal to 330 degrees. So unlike the previous example, we're finding the measure of the major arc. 
so we have a larger number to work with, in this case 330 degrees. In the numerator, that's the measure of arc x w y. We put that over 360 degrees, we multiply that by 2 pi times the radius, which is 12 meters, and we start to cancel. Canceling this fraction, this ratio, and what we're doing now is the basic math to get our final answer. Um, 330 and 360, well, they're both divisible by 100, so we can knock those zeros off because 330 divided by 100 is 33, and 360 divided by 100 is 36. Next, I'll look at 300 or 33 and 36 for common factors, and they're both divisible by 3. That leaves me 11 in the numerator and 12 in the denominator. Over here, I still have 2 and 12 that I have to try to cancel in 12, and that should be pretty obvious that the 12s can divide out. They're both divisible by 12. So when I divide or cancel the 12s out, by dividing each of them by 12, that leaves me with 1. So this becomes a very easy problem in terms of pi. What I'm left with in the numerator is to multiply is 11 times 2 times pi. Well, 11 times 2 is 22, and 22 times pi we just express as 22 pi. In the denominator, we're left with 1 times 1. That gives us 22 pi over 1. Well, you should know, studying geometry, that we don't need to put that denominator of 1. The best answer in terms of pi is 22 pi. If you need to, you can use the pi button on your calculator or multiply that by 3.14. And what I mean by that is the 22. And that's how we find the measure of arcs using the arc length theorem. I just want to take a minute. Thanks for watching. You know, I hope watching this video helped you today. If it did help, then leave a comment. I just want to make a point out here. If you're studying geometry, you might have studied conditionals. The hypothesis of this conditional statement is, I helped. The conclusion is, leave a comment. Have a good day. Bye-bye.